So you want to learn how to mod in Final Fantasy XIV, and there are no guides available on YouTube. The only guide available currently is a guide made by Renny. So in this video, I will share all the basic things you need to know about modding. There won't be the complex parts of modding such as custom skins and such, but if that is required piece of information, then I will make a guide for that too. So let's get into it. Firstly, you must know any form of modding is prohibited via the terms of service by Square Enix. They are unable to tell whether you are modding or not, however, they have no way of proving it unless you openly admit it, or stream the game with said mods. Even video content is difficult to prove mods because it can be manipulated, as dumb as that sounds. So it does not matter if you are actually cheating in the game, adding quality of life, or simple gooning material, all mods are bad, according to Square Enix. And as a side note, there will be links to things mentioned in this video. You'll know that when this springs up. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started. We start by downloading text tools, which is needed for updating mods due to the Dawn Trail graphical update. Many mods are already updated, but some still need manual updates. XIV Launcher is the next essential download. It hosts mods and automatically logs you into the game without needing to sign in every time. Once the game launches, press escape to see two new tabs, Dalamud Plugins and Settings. The Plugins tab lets you access various mods, while Settings is where you begin your modding journey. In the Experimental tab, paste this URL in the URL section, enable it, and save. Now you can download Penumbra and other mods, such as Glamour, which lets you see your character in all the glams in the game. I recommend using an external hard drive for modding, as mods can quickly consume storage space. After downloading Penumbra, type slash Penumbra in chat. Make sure to set your chat mode to party to avoid mistakes and outing yourself for using mods. And create a new mod folder like FFXIV mods. Set this folder in Penumbra. You can now visit the archive, where you'll need to make an account to access all kinds of content. From here, you can search for hair, face, and body mods. Be sure to install the base mod first. For example, if you wish to use Yab as your body mod, you must first download Bebo. This is applied to many other examples, whether they are body mods or gear mods, depending on the body of your choice. Once these mods are installed, open Penumbra. Go to Import, find the mod, and install it. Penumbra uses a priority system, so ensure that Bebo is set to priority 0 and Yab to priority 1 for proper texture display. Again, this is just an example, but it can be applied to anything that has a priority system, whether they're body mods or gear mods. After applying the mod, however, redraw your character to see the changes. Some mods are not updated by the author to work with the Dawn Trail graphical update. Therefore, you must download it, double-click to install through text tools instead of importing it into Penumbra. You'll see the menu like this, which is self-explanatory, just click continue. Most of the time, this will work, but not always. To uninstall a mod, click on it, hold Ctrl plus Shift, and press the delete option here. The modding scene can be more complex than this explanation, but I'm trying to save time and explain as thoroughly as I possibly can. I had to take this whole part of the script and chuck it down from 800 words to 300 words. You're welcome. And of course, there are more websites to download mods from, like Heliosphere, The Glamour Dresser, etc. But the archive is the most popular one. And if there is a mod you'd like to have, but it's placed on a premium glamour piece, you can always make an item swap, like this. There are some complications that even my monkey brain can't comprehend, but it works majority of the times. There are a ton of servers out there that assist people with mods, and you can join my Discord server too to get help from my community as well. And I highly recommend you organize your mods before it's too late. Have specific identifications of what kind of mod you have, whether they affect the face, the body, gear, and such. And you can go further to organizing them whether they affect a specific piece, a set, or something. If you want to get a better experience from the modding scene, then it's time to download Mare Elementorum from the same experimental link we pasted for Penumbra and Glamourer. It's a whole process though. First, you need to join the Mare Elementorum Discord server and link your character to the database of Mare via the lodestone. From the server, you can follow through the process till you receive a code to link it to your lodestone. Afterwards, you're ready to show people your true form. But be sure to not share and take anyone's Mare code. Be careful with how open 
open you are with yourself because people can steal some assets that you downloaded on your character. Not everyone, but a select few. And there are other mods out there that can help improve your experience within the game that does not have much to do with the visual parts of it, like big player debuffs, which just shows the debuffs you apply on your target being much larger than that of the other players. Or chat bubbles, which is allegedly coming to the vanilla game, but till then, you can download this mod. And even a mod like Simple Tweaks, which adds things to the game that should be in the vanilla game anyways, like being able to use Alt F4 to close the game. Yep. And there are a ton of other plugins out there that help with the most basic things such as crafting with Artisan, or retainer management with Auto Retainer, and the likes. Just take it to Uncle Google and find all the kinds of mods you'd like to have. Chances are, they are there. You just need to find the experimental link to get it. Other examples of plugins you can get into are like Customize Plus, which allows you to edit your character further than what the vanilla game offers. Even other things like Katysis and Bryote that improve your ability to G-pose. Other valuable mods mods like no clippy. If you play with poor ping, this mod would be your tool to play the game as it is intended to be played, and so on and so forth. And as you all know, mods are prohibited by Square Enix regardless of the intention due to laws in Japan. So if you do decide to mod, be discreet about it. You can be public with mods as most people are on places like Twitter and YouTube. Just don't show your character's details. So for safety reasons, keep your name on initials if you wish to still be around on social platforms like Twitch, YouTube, or anything like that like that, as well as hiding the names of others to avoid connections. And that's all I have to show you today. As the title says, this is the basic part of the modding scene in Final Fantasy XIV. And hopefully, from this video, you've grown wings strong enough to fly and explore other areas of the large continent of mods. So go out there and become your true self, but just be sure to stay safe. Oh, and don't be a creep, seriously, there are way too many of you on the market. <laughs>